Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you have any suggestion regarding the explanation or anything else, you can suggest in the comment box. Or if you like the content of my channel, do subscribe. Okay, let's get into our classes. Today's topic of discussion is Grotus Rapper Law and Stark Einstein Law. Okay, I hope you all get a basic idea regarding the topic photochemistry from my three previous video. This laws of photochemistry, Grotus Draper law, Stark Einstein law of photochemical equivalence. The first law of photochemistry, it is Grotus Draper law was the first law of photochemistry. And Stark Einstein law of photochemical equivalence was the second law of photochemistry. First, we are discussing Grotus Draper law. Okay. Grotus Draper law. This law was proposed by the two scientists Grotus and Draper in the 19th century. Okay. They found that all the light that was incident on a system or anything else or a reacting molecules was not effective in bringing about a chemical change. Yes. Let us discuss in detail. Suppose this A and B, it is A and B are reacting molecules. Suppose A and B are reacting molecules. When light falls on the reactants, when light falls on these reactants, what is happening? It is it absorbs light. These molecules, the molecules inside this reacting species, this is the system. When light falls on these reactants, it absorbs the light. And it get converted into product. Okay, it absorbs the light and it get converted into product. That is only when that light, that light, that light which is absorbed by a system can bring about a chemical change to lead the product. It is only when that light. That light which is absorbed by a system can bring about a chemical change. That is here some part of the system or reacting molecules are absorbing light. Some part of the system or reacting molecules are absorbing light. Only that part is converted into product. That is only that part is converted into product. That is when light uh, radiation falls, when light radiation falls, the reacting molecules, that is when light radiation falls on these reacting molecules, some part of the system reflect light, that is some part of the system reflected. There is some part of the system reflect light and some part of the system transmit light. That is light get transmitted through the system and some part of the light get reflected and some part of this light get absorbed. That is only that part that is that part of the molecule or reacting species or this system are absorbing light that part is converted into formation of the products only that part is converted into products okay it is when light radiation falls uh, on these reacting molecules some part of the system get reflected and some of the light are transmitted through these system that is through these molecules transmitted and reflected and some part of the light get absorbed thus only the absorbed light or radiation will cause the photochemical reaction to lead the product okay 
the reflected light and the transmitted light are not responsible for photochemical reaction. Only the absorbed light will causes photochemical reaction. Okay. Does reflected light and transmitted light will not allow to proceed the photochemical reaction. Okay. Let's go through the statement. It states that only those radiation which are absorbed by the reacting system are effective in producing chemical change. There is only those radiation which are absorbed by the reacting system are effective in producing chemical change and leading them to form the product. Okay. This reflected light and transmitted light are not responsible for the photochemical reaction. Only the absorbed light will cause the photochemical reaction. That is in producing effective, effective in producing chemical change. This law was proposed by two scientists, Grothus and Rapper. It's also known as first law of photochemistry that we had already discussed. This, it implies that there cannot be a chemical, photochemical reaction unless light is absorbed. That's the point. This, there will not be a photochemical reaction if light is not absorbed. Okay. But it does not mean that light absorbed by any system would always cause a chemical reaction. This, it does not mean that light absorbed by any system would always cause a chemical reaction. Light is necessary to take or to proceed a photochemical reaction. Okay. It is a part of light absorbed or whole of it is sometimes may converted into heat or sometimes absorbed radiation may be re-emitted as light of the same or different frequency. That is, I am saying one thing that, that it does not mean that light absorption by any reacting species will not always cause a chemical reaction. Sorry, one mistake. That is, it does not mean that light absorbed by any system will always cause a chemical reaction. That is, sometimes the part of light absorbed may convert it into heat. Or sometimes absorbed radiation may be re-emitted. Re-emitted as light of the same or different frequency. This emission of radiation which occurs immediately after absorption is known as fluorescence that we are studying in detail the term fluorescence and phosphorescence in my coming videos that is i am explaining in the jablonski diagram here you just focus on the name it is fluorescence and phosphorescence okay you just study this definition here in this Crothus Draper law. Okay. That is, if there is a time lag in this emission, suppose this re emission, that is, light absorbed is re emitted as light of the same or different frequency after some time. That is, time lag after some time. That is called phosphorescence. That emission is, is known as phosphorescence. That is fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence means it is sometimes absorbed radiation may be re-emitted as light of the same or different frequency. This emission of radiation which occurs immediately after absorption is known as fluorescence. And if there is a time lag in this emission, it is called Phosphorescence. And one important point in this Grothus Trapper law is reflected or transmitted light does not produce any chemical change. Thus, reflected 
or transmitted light does not produce any chemical change. It is only that part of the light, only that part of the light which is absorbed by these reacting molecules are converted into product. That light which is absorbed by a system can bring about a chemical change. Okay. When radiation falls on these reacting molecules, some part of the system get reflected and some part of the system get transmitted. Okay, the transmitted and reflected light are not responsible for the photochemical reaction. Only the absorbed light will cause the photochemical reaction. Okay. Here you can see the equation that is by grothus draper law absorbed light can be calculated by following relation. I absorbed equal to I0 minus IT where I absorbed means intensity of absorbed light by reacting system. I0 is the intensity of the light. And IT is the intensity of light transmitted. This I absorbed intensity of the absorbed light by reacting system equal to intensity of light. That is overall intensity of the light minus intensity of light transmitted. Okay. Next we are discussing Stark. Einstein law of photochemical equivalence. That is the second law of photochemistry. It states that each molecule activated by light in a photochemical process absorbs one quantum of the radiation which causes the activation. That is it is also called principle of quantum theory of activation. This law was also called principle of quantum theory of activation. Let us discuss the process in detail. Okay. Here you can see AB. Suppose for a molecule to occur photochemical change, this molecule must absorb one photon. That is AB is a molecule. This AB is a, suppose AB is a reacting species or molecules. There are so many molecules in this reacting species. For a molecule, for this molecule to occur photochemical change, this molecule must absorb, must absorb one photon from this light. It is this molecule must absorb one photon from light okay that is for a molecule to occur photochemical change this molecule must absorb one photon suppose if 10 molecules are there 10 photons are absorbed and converted into product. Okay, that is the number of molecules present in a reactant. The number of molecules present in this reactant is equal to the number of photons absorbed to occur photochemical reaction, to occur photochemical change. That is per molecule per photon. Per molecule per photon. This number of molecules present in this reactant species is equal to the number of molecules absorbed to occur photochemical change. Okay. I hope you all got this. Stark-Einstein law. It states that each molecule activated by light in a photochemical process absorbs 
one quantum of the radiation which causes the activation. That is, each molecule is activated by the light in the photochemical process by absorbing one photon, that is H nu, that is same as one quantum of the radiation. And so it is also called principle of quantum theory of activation. Okay. This is the second law of photochemistry and also we can say that this law emerged out from the stock and Einstein. This, these two Einsteins put forward this law. That is actually the two scientists applied the concept of energy quantum to photochemical reaction. That is, according to this reaction, according to this law, one, lo one mole molecule is activated by the absorption of one quantum of radiation in the primary step of a photochemical reaction. Suppose, nu is the frequency of radiation absorbed. The energy absorbed by one activated molecule would be H nu. That is, H is the Planck's constant. Nu is the frequency. Then the energy absorbed per mole is given by A is equal to N0 H nu. That is, nu is equal to C by lambda. Where C is the velocity of light and lambda is the wavelength. It is E is equal to N0 H nu. That is, we are substituting nu is equal to C by lambda. In this equation, we have N0 H C by lambda. Next, in the next step, we are substituting N0, that is, Avagadro draw number. That is, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 mole inverse. And H Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second and C the velocity of the light that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. We are substituting these values in this equation and we are getting E is equal to 0.1197 joule per mole. What is this E is equal to 0.1197 joule per mole? That is quantity E. The energy absorbed per mole of the reacting substance. That is called Einstein. It is quantity E. The energy absorbed per mole of the reacting substance is called Einstein. It is energy absorbed per mole of activated molecules. That is energy of Avogadro number of quanta is called an Einstein. Okay. It is, it is evident from the, uh, it is evident from the, its numerical value varies inversely its numerical value, that is for E, its numerical value inversely as the wavelength of the light absorbed. The shorter the wavelength, greater is the energy absorbed. That is for shorter the wavelength, energy greater is the energy absorbed. Okay, all of you got it. Here is the stark einstein law of photochemical equivalence. That is, each molecule activated by light in a photochemical process absorbs one quantum of radiation which causes the activation. Okay, we have to discuss some more points. The law is applicable only to the primary process of a photochemical reaction. Yes, we had already studied that primary process. What is actually primary process? The process which is happening by the absorption of light. Yes, process is taking place by the absorption of light. That is, the law of photochemical equivalence is only applicable to the primary process of a photochemical reaction reaction. That is the step that taking place as a consequence of absorption of light. But what is in the case
series of secondary processes the secondary processes which occur without light absorption are beyond the concern of this law yes. this law states that for a photochemical reaction to occur that is for a molecule to occur photochemical change this molecule must absorb one photon hence we can say that this law is restricted only to the primary process this law is applicable only to the primary process and for a secondary process for a secondary reaction there will be a deviation from the law when it is when it is applied to the overall reaction this this law is only applicable to primary process of a photochemical reaction the secondary process which occur thereafter without light absorption are beyond the concern of the law beyond the concern of the law in other words the law is strictly valid only to a reaction in which light absorbing molecules react or decompose immediately after light absorption without getting involved in secondary reaction that is in the case of reaction in which secondary process do occur there will be a deviation from the law okay let us discuss the utility of this law that is application okay application it is used for the calculation of the rates of formation of reactive intermediates in photochemistry that is we can calculate the rate of formation of reactive intermediates in a chemical reaction we can calculate the rate at which the reactive intermediates are formed the second it is used in the study of mechanism of photochemical reaction we can study the mechanism of photochemical reaction using this law these two laws are very important laws in photochemistry that is laws of photochemistry first one grotter's draper law that is the first law of photochemistry and the second one stark and steel law of photochemical equivalence that is the second law of photochemistry if you have any doubts regarding this section you can ask doubts in the comment section okay next okay thank you